Imagine that a building is going in next door to you. It can be clad in one of these common materials. If you had to choose three that you liked and three that you disliked, which ones would they be? Engineered wood, concrete, limestone, metal, clay brick, vinyl, stucco, natural wood, concrete brick, or glass. Hey everybody. I surveyed my audience and found that people have very clear preferences when it comes to building material. The first trend is people like traditional materials, clay bricks, wood, and limestone. Meanwhile, only 14% said glass, 13% said concrete brick, and the plastic prince, the royal reproduction, the most fake of all, vinyl, got just 6%. But there is more to it than that. It also depends on what is already on your street. Although only 6% of people list vinyl as one of their favorites, if their street already has mostly vinyl housing, the people who prefer it more than doubles to 14%. In my town, the existing housing stock is often made from limestone and brick. That creates a very strong preference amongst people who live here. A natural building material? Like it. That matches the rest of a street. I love it. 83% of people listed clay brick as one of their favorite building materials. And only 2% said that it was one of their least favorite. People love clay brick. So what the fuck is happening here? It's pretty safe to say that the average neighbor would have preferred a building made from clay brick and limestone. So why don't they get what they want? Well, as far as economics go, these days clay bricks are still a building material in frequent use. But it is falling out of favor as developers choose cheaper materials and architects choose more flexible options. You see a lot of the new developments around town use what looks like brick, but it is actually a precast concrete panel. The devil can take many forms. All right, Lynn where they stamp the brick pattern, the brick relief, in at the factory. Concrete is really dominating. Even when it's not a precast panel, the bricks themselves are often made from concrete. Concrete bricks are a similar price to clay, but like a Honda Civic, they can be more durable and have a range of color options. Honda Civic. However, concrete bricks have one problem. Big booze, bud. People don't like them. 44% of respondents had them as one of their least liked materials. You see, both Tom and Chet are Hanks, but one is a beloved American icon, while the other is the concrete brick of the family. So people like certain materials, but in many places, new developments aren't made from it. And the problems that causes are much more than building skin deep. Let's get into it. So imagine that building going in across the road from you. It's gonna be clad in one of your neighborhood's least favorite materials. For you and your neighbors, that's all relative. But let's use the ones that people in my city choose as their least favorite. That's concrete, vinyl, and stucco. So something like a concrete foundation with vinyl siding higher up, or maybe uh, even some accented stucco features. I christened this building the Kill Me Complex. Kill me. But to be fair, if this building was designed by an architect, it would probably just be concrete and vinyl sidings higher up, something like that. Now take this building, the building that's made out of a material that you really don't like, and ask yourself, well, what's the maximum height you'd want that building to be? Now imagine a different development, but this time the exterior is one of your most favoritest materials. In my city, it would be a limestone foundation with clay brick upper levels and some wood accents. So like the balcony is made out of wood. Does your maximum height when it's made out of one of your favorite materials go up? Well, for most people I surveyed, it certainly did. When a building was clad in one of those least liked materials, heights reduced by 25%. And even amongst the density fans in my audience who said the same height no matter what, people were still three times as likely to say they were happy with a development when it used one of their preferred materials. So if you went into this neighborhood in Montreal and said, hey, I'm building a three-story walk-up, by simply building it out of brick instead of concrete, you'll probably find that the neighbors would be willing to put up with an entirely new floor on top. So that's another couple of units. And you can kind of see this effect in action on this really interesting corner. You have a seven-story and an eight-story development. They're huge compared to the surrounding buildings. But when I bring them up with people and say, hey, it's really interesting how big those buildings are in this neighborhood, people often don't know what I'm talking about. And I'll say, oh, it's on Laurier, you know, between uh, Saint Denis and Saint Laurent, opposite Chez Claudette. And they'll say, I don't, I don't know what you mean. And that's kind of the point. They just don't stand out that much. Even though they're huge and they're built in a quite different architectural style to the traditional buildings in the area. The simple fact that they're made out of a fairly familiar looking material just helps them blend in and therefore the neighbors just don't mind them as much. 
At least that's my theory. This is the reason exterior cladding is actually really important. If every constructed building in the city could have 25% more units simply by choosing a new cladding, that's thousands of additional units built a year, and all of that is density. The good stuff. If you said to developers, swap those uh, concrete bricks and you get 25% more height, that is a deal they would take. So why isn't everything around here made out of clay brick? There's two core problems. The first issue is we're selfish bastards. Now in a perfect world, you live inside a building made out of your favorite material with laundry, sprinklers, private balcony with a supportive partner who says things like, I support your decision to create a YouTube channel with not one, but two videos about bricks. But my survey shows that people dock much more off their purchase price when removing these amenities than when changing what the building is clad in. Even though in that same survey, they just said they wouldn't want a new building made out of concrete bricks going in next door. I even asked a question which showed the same development in my neighborhood, but from two angles. One showed the shiny concrete brick side and the other showed the traditional clay angle of the very same building complex. 80% of the locals preferred the red clay brick side of the building. I even had a little suggestion box for what they would change about the building if they were the architect, which ended up being like the two minute hate for modern condos. None of these shitty little white and black boxes. I hate the two-tone red, black, red, white look most modern condos have. Less modern. Less glass, more of some other material, like brick. Redesign the black and white area with more fitting colors. Remove the white and black edition. Get rid of that. So this is what I call the aesthetic tragedy of the commons. When we're living in our multifamily building, looking out the window, the average, in this case, Montrealer, wants to see nice clay brick buildings. It doesn't even need to be expensive limestone but we open our wallets much wider for in-suite laundry or a private balcony than we do to prevent our own building being an eyesore in our neighborhood. Selfishly, it's the one building you can't see at your own window. That's issue one. Issue two is architects. Architecture is an applied art. Like most creative professions, their careers have this tension. It's the same tension that the art world has. Joe Citizen doesn't really like the cutting edge or experimental stuff. Joe Citizen is into landscapes, bowls of fruit, and Renaissance street scenes. Architects don't want to be stuck spending their careers painting fucking fruit bowls. I have something to express. I mean, they just spent years getting overqualified for their job, so you know, we have to give them something. They also know that certain things are gonna become like the sushi of buildings. What's that? Sushi. You're gonna eat that? A kind of weird, acquired taste of the 1980s that not that many people are into that then becomes incredibly popular and mainstream, but like 40 years later. The general public though are not building foodies, you know? We have a very plodding meat and potatoes palette when it comes to buildings. It's tough because if the public had always gotten what we wanted, many of the things that we love today would never have been built. This is the risk and reward of trying new things. It's quite funny what buildings were controversial in the past. The Eiffel Tower is a pretty famous example. People at the time hated it for very, very modern reasons. It's too big, it's ugly, it doesn't fit in. The Victorian row houses in Montreal were the McMansions of their day. They were seen as gaudy and excessive with their fake turrets and over the top details. But these days people fucking love them and they've become a symbol of the city which people flock here to see. You can even see that appreciation creeping in for the very radical and traditionally unpopular brutalism. A lot of the time, and I'd say most of the time, architects do end up being vindicated, but their profession and their partners in crime, city planners, have often been incredibly wrong. A lot of brutalism built in the 1960s replaced beautiful row houses that people would still prefer if given the choice today. Architects can have a very dismissive attitude towards us plebs over all of this. Architects do want to build stuff to fit in and improve the area. They're a key pillar in the built environment. It's just they're not seeing the building the same way that Joe Citizen does. Joe Citizen is seeing the size of a building and what it's clad in. And often that is about as deep as it goes. That's why you hear people describing buildings in this kind of size and material way. You know, it's like small brick house, big plastic condo. When you learn about design things like architecture, I don't know why, but for some reason it seems to make you more fond of them. It's not ugly, uh, it's got this philosophy and 
Uh, did you notice how when the light shines uh, through here uh, on the solstice, uh, this gets lit up and all the tile work here was done by the same artist who did that building over there. And it becomes part of this tapestry of design and you start to appreciate it from these other angles. Whereas if you're a citizen, you're just face value looking at it and going like, big and ugly, rude, doesn't fit in. And that's the problem. Joe Citizen is the bulk of a population. The architects and people who are into this stuff, that's a small proportion of a population. Generally, when it is big and made out of something different to the neighboring buildings, it's a recipe for dissatisfaction from the regular people that live next to it. And it's always gonna be like that. That's never ever gonna change. Architects will always see this other level of detail and work done to complement without copying, but Joe Citizen doesn't notice complementary window lints and building lines. To use the bowl of fruit thing, like if here's your traditional bowl, the architect sees this like abstract bowl and is like, oh neat, kind of tip of the hat to the bowl of fruit tradition, but it's like a modern take. Joe Citizen just says like, I don't want to live next to that. <laughs> Materials are important to regular people because they're human scale. People understand brick and wood and concrete a lot more than they understand nuanced things in the building form. Right now, architects are into colored bricks, contrasting architecture, deconstructivist balcony patterning, uh, there's metal panels, polished concrete and glass. They're not really into traditional architecture at the moment. They don't want to do fruit bowls. And therefore, Joe Citizen is often being told to suck it. And of course, we do have bureaucratic and community mechanisms to review projects and their aesthetics, but they're just not very well aligned with Joe Citizen's views. Because, you know, who becomes a judge? Lawyers. And who becomes a principal? Teachers. And who ends up being on the panel making the call on building aesthetics? Architects. Naturally, they're the experts. When you look at the composition of the committees that consult and decide the direction or aesthetics, architects usually form the bulk of the members, of course, because they're the right people to give specific and useful feedback to other architects. If the panel was made up of Joe Citizen, they would be saying things like, well, we know from a survey, they would be saying, replace the black bricks with a limestone facade, which architects know is like, unreasonably expensive in the modern era. Limestone facade, fully staffed glory hall. No way. Projects designed by architects being approved by architects is not a conspiracy. It's just as good an idea as we can come up with, but it suffers a lot from groupthink. As a former architect, I think that this architect is just brilliant. Aesthetics are actually a serious issue that gets shrugged off by people who are trying to get more housing density built. Hey, what are you gonna do? You know, they'll always resist more housing. It just comes with the territory of building housing. They don't want it. Does it have to be like that? Is there really no difference? Or are we chopping five, 10, 20% off our housing developments by ignoring this obvious fact? People will tolerate a higher density building when they like the way that that building looks. Could building stuff that doesn't fit in out of radically different materials end up being a mistake? Yes! Could it be wrong, not because it's aesthetically wrong, but because dismissing the public's preferences for fruit bowl buildings has inflamed nimbyism? Yes. Could we figure out some way of giving developers extra floors for cladding buildings and materials that the public prefers? You're goddamn right we could. So I know that people are wanting me to tie these episodes together or wrap them up in this kind of thing with a detailed solution. But this is a two hour long series <laughs> on a very complex topic. We're kind of in the earlier episodes in the run and they're mostly about admitting that we have a problem. There's still plenty of people who are saying things like, oh, it's not about housing supply, it's about foreign investors. Or they're saying, oh, it's, uh, you know, all we need to do to solve the housing supply crisis is densify suburbia. And you're like, okay, well, 30 years later, uh, housing prices are real fucking expensive. Doesn't seem like suburbia really wants to do that. Um, are we gonna just keep saying the same thing or are we gonna try something different? The, the positive stuff is coming. There is lots of places around the world who are doing super cool things that will work. It is a solvable problem and the problem is bad enough and like right at the front of a lot of people's minds in a way which usually means that it gets worked on. It's not gonna be like this forever, but uh, it doesn't change unless we do something about it and that's why I am making this series so stay tuned for that. Uh, I think that's all I gotta say. All right. Let's visit Mr. Randolph Evans, a nationally known architect. Mr. Evans, 
What do you think of asbestos cement siding as a sidewall for the homes you design? I like it very much. It can be clad in one of these common materials. Engineered wood, concrete, limestone, metal, clay brick, vinyl stucco, that's not a thing, fuck, 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 need to go back, shouldn't be listing building materials as a thing in a script, that's stupid. What the fuck is happening here? Fuck. What the fuck is happening here, you stupid fucking prompter. Throw your career in the toilet and make a YouTube channel with not one but two videos about bricks. That's the wrong number of things. Rooftop roller coaster and pool. Tomato ju tomato juice on tap. Mwah. One day, one day money will will get tomato juice on tap project. I'll know when I've made it because I've plumbed a separate tomato juice line into my house. Yes. Make the top thing and the front structure more homogenous with the brick. None of those shitty little black and white boxes. Less glass and more of the other materials like brick. Less modern. Remove the... <laughs> That's probably offensive. Okay. Uh, gotta, gotta call in a friend who's a woman. <laughs> God, God, what's the next voice gonna be? I'm gonna sound like racist uncle doing like Chinese people soon. All right, I gotta call some, I gotta call some help in for that one.